Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel. So, today we are going to talk about Ascaris lumbricoides. This is a continuation of the parasitology series, partially the nematode series, and this is the fourth video in that series. And you know what guys, I've got a good news for you. I've recently uploaded parasitology handouts on my YouTube channel. You can find its link in the description, in the community, or the about tab of this channel. Before starting the lecture, I like to tell that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Let's get into it. Ascaris lumbricoidus. It is also known as a giant roundworm. It is the largest nematode measuring about 25 centimeters. It is an intestinal nematode. It is responsible for causing escharoiasis. It is the most common helminthic infestation in the world. In the picture, you can see Ascaris lumbricoides in the hands of this person. Lecture outline. I have introduced you guys to the Ascaris lumbricoides. Now we'll discuss its morphology, habitat and transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, and then the prevention. Before talking about the morphology, I would like to tell that there are three developmental stages that exist in the life cycle of every nematode. First one is egg, then comes the larva, and the third one is adult. Let's start with the egg first. It has two forms. One is fertilized and the other one is unfertilized. Fertilized egg. It is round or oval in shape. It has irregular surface. As you can see in this picture, it has this irregular outer surface. It is 50 to 70 micrometers by 40 to 50 micrometers in size. It is golden brown because it is bile stained. It appears golden brown in saline mount coverings. It is surrounded by a thick, smooth, translucent shell, consisting following three layers. The outer coarsely mammillated albuminous coat, a thick transparent middle layer, and the third one is inner lipoidal vitelline membrane. As you can see in this picture, it has got this outer coarsely mammillated albuminous coat a thick transparent middle layer and this one, the yellow one, inner lipoidal vitelline membrane. Some eggs are found in feces without that mammillated albuminous coat. These eggs are termed as decorticated eggs. And you know what guys, the fertilized egg contains very large, conspicuous, fertilized and unsegmented ovum. Let's see that. Here you can see this one is the ovum. Now let's talk about unfertilized egg. It is elliptical in shape. Its size is 80 micrometers by 50 micrometers. It is similar in color to that of the fertilized egg. It is golden brown because it is bile stained and it appears golden brown in saline mount. Coverings. Coverings of the unfertilized egg are similar to those of fertilized eggs but the albuminous coat is thin, distorted, and scanty. It also contains an ovum, but that is small and atrophied. Let's see. This is the unfertilized egg. Here is its small atrophied ovum. Here is the thin albuminous coat. This one is the thick transparent middle layer. And this one is the inner lipoidal vitelline membrane, and it also has an irregular outer surface. Eggs are infective when they are embryonated and they become diagnostic when they are unembryonated. And when eggs pass out of the human body, they are in their diagnostic stage. Next up is larva. Larva is developed within the egg shell in 10 to 40 days. It hatches and matures in the intestine because when eggs are ingested, they will make their way to the intestine and in the intestine, eggs will hatch and the larva will come out. This is how the larva looks like. Adult worm. Don't forget that we are talking about Ascaris lumbricoides worm here. It is elongated and cylindrical in shape. As we've talked that it is 25 centimeters or more in size. It is the largest 
nematode. Uh, that's why it is known as giant roundworm. Structure of the adult worm. Unlike those of the tapeworms, it is unsegmented. It has no segments in its body. It tapers at both ends. Female is slightly larger than the male. A single female can produce up to 200,000 eggs per day. It's a large number. Anterior end is thinner than the posterior end. Anterior end. Mouth opens here. It has got three finely toothed lips, one dorsal and two ventral. Posterior end. Male is curved ventrally while the female is straight. Anus opens subterminally on the ventral aspect. Genital pore opens in cloaca. Body cavity. As we mentioned that it has no segment, so its body organs like digestive and reproductive organs flow inside the body cavity. And body cavity contain an irritating fluid called ascaron or ascarase. World War opening. It is present only in females and it is situated at the junction of anterior and middle thirds of body on midventral aspect. Size of the male is 15 to 30 centimeters but that of female is 20 to 35 centimeters but on average we can say that both the male and female size about 25 centimeters. Color. They are brownish and pink when they are freshly obtained from the intestine, but they, their color gradually changes to white. As you can see on the picture on the right side, this is male, it has this called posterior end, and this is female having the straight posterior end. Both tapers at both the ends, anterior and posterior ends, and their color is uh, about to white and on the left side you can see the organs the triradiate mouth with lips one dorsal and two ventral the excretory pore lateral line female gonopore cloacal aperture penile setate curved tail because this is male and it has got straight tail because this is female and an anus Habitat. Hosts. The definitive host is human beings for the worms. Um, for the eggs, the habitat is soil. For becoming embryonated, eggs need moist, warm soil. And Ascaris lumbricoides has no intermediate host. Transmission. Transmission occurs via fecal or root, means by ingesting the womb eggs, or by inhalation of desiccated, means dry, eggs in the dust. I'll discuss uh, in life cycle that how the eggs after getting to the respiratory tract are responsible for causing escharosis. Life cycle. It has got two stages, human cycle and the external environment cycle. The human cycle is further classified as lung stage and intestinal stage. Let's start with the human cycle first. Human cycle. Humans are infected by ingesting womb eggs in food or water contaminated with human feces. When these eggs enter the human body, they move to the small intestine where they hatch and release the larvae. This was the first intestinal stage as the intestinal stage has two phases. Then the larva migrates through the gut wall, enter into the bloodstream and into the lungs. This is the lung stage. In the lungs, the larvae enter the alveoli, pass up the bronchia and trachea and then are swallowed up. When they are cuffed up, they are swallowed back. And on swallowing them back, they will get back to the intestine. Then the second phase of intestinal stage will start. So the intestinal stage has two phases. The first one before the lung stage and the second one after the lung stage when the larvae are swallowed back. Within the small intestine, the larvae become adults. They will live in the lumen. They do not attach to the gut wall. They derive their sustenance from the ingested food. And thousands of eggs are released in feces daily. As we've discussed in morphology, that, 
that a single female can lay up to 200,000 eggs per day. After the release of eggs, those eggs will reach the soil. Then the external environment cycle starts. Eggs become embryonated in warm, moist soil and eggs become infectious after one month. And the ingestion of these embryonated eggs completes the cycle. Diagrammatic representation of life cycle of Ascaris lumbricoides. It starts when the ingestion of embryonated eggs occurs. After ingestion, these eggs will enter the small intestine where they will hatch and will release this larvae. The larva will enter the circulation and will migrate to the lungs as this blue dotted arrow is showing. After entering the lungs, larvae are cuffed up and swallowed, re-entering the gastrointestinal tract. Maturation proceeds in the small intestine. Maturation of what? Maturation of larvae into the adult, male and the female. When the larvae is matured into male and female adults, they will release thousands of fertilized eggs in the feces. As you can see on this soil, the feces are deposited. This unfertilized egg will be fertilized and will have the two cell stage, then this advanced cleavage stage, and then this embryonated uh, egg will again be ingested by the human and this will complete the cycle. As we know that unembryonated eggs are the diagnostic feature and the embryonated eggs are responsible for causing infection, so they are infective stage of the eggs. Pathogenesis. The major damage occurs during larval migration rather than from the presence of adult worm in the intestine. The principal sites of tissue reaction are the lungs, where inflammation with an eosinophilic exudate occurs in response to larval antigens. Because the adults derive their nourishment from the ingested food, a heavy worm burden may contribute to malnutrition, especially in children in developing countries. Epidemiology Iscaris infection is very common, especially in the tropics. Hundreds of millions of people are affected. In United States, most cases occur in southern states. Clinical Findings the signs and symptoms may occur due to migrating larvae and the presence of adult worms in the intestine. Due to migrating larvae, most infections are asymptomatic, but Ascaris pneumonia, uh, in which Loeffler syndrome occur, that is a disease in which eosinophils accumulate in the lung in response to a parasitic infection. Um, Ascaris pneumonia will occur with fever, cough, and eosinophilia uh, with a heavy larval burden. This can also cause dyspnea, urticarial rash, blood tinct sputum, abdominal pain because the worms are still present in the intestine. Larvae may reach brain, spinal cord, heart, kidneys, and causes disturbances there. Due to adult worm, Spoliative effects like protein malnutrition, vitamin A deficiency leading to night blindness, toxic effects are typhoid like fever, allergic reactions, official edema, conjunctivitis, upper respiratory tract infections. Mechanical effects can be intestinal obstruction, ectopic ascariasis can cause vomiting, suffocation, appendicitis, obstructive jaundice, acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis. These are actually the complications. Let's discuss what are the complications. Appendicitis, jaundice if the bile ducts are involved, pneumonia, bowel perforation, mechanical obstruction. These are the complications. Lab diagnosis. We'll need sample of feces, vomitus, sputum, blood, serum, and bile. Microscopy. We'll look the number and the shape of eggs. Shape will tell us whether the egg is fertilized or unfertilized. Blood tests will show eosinophilia. We'll also go for endoscopy, so whether the worm is present in the intestine or not, endoscopy will reveal that. As you can see on the right side, this is the egg. And on the left side, this is the worm. 
eggs and worms both are present in the stool. Eggs are visualized under the microscope, but worm can be seen with the naked eye. Radiology. With barium emulsion, which is ingested by worm within four to six hours, casts an opaque string-like shadow. On the left side, the intestinal x-ray is revealing the opaque string-like worm these red arrows are pointing towards that worm and on the right side you can see in the lungs this white spread the red arrow is pointing towards that that is the worm saturated solution of common salt fertilized eggs will float while unfertilized egg do not float in that solution dermal reaction scratch test with Powder ascaris antigen that is often positive if the patient is suffering from ascariasis. Immunity. Partial acquired immunity and innate immunity are developed against ascariasis. Treatment. Drugs of choice are albendazole, mebendazole, and ivermectin. We'll also go for vitamin supplementations because there is vitamin A deficiency leading to night blindness. If the worms in the small intestine are leading to intestinal obstruction, then we will go for surgical removal of the worms. Prevention. Good hand and food hygiene. Proper disposal of feces can prevent the ascariasis. And also the treatment of parasitized individuals is important. Alright guys, let's review everything quickly. The organism is Ascaris lambricoides. Its common name is giant roundworm as it's responsible for causing ascariasis. Its mode of transmission is via fecal-oral route or by inhalation of the desiccated or the dry eggs. Hosts. Hosts are the human beings, the definitive hosts, and there are no intermediate hosts for Ascaris lambricoides. Endemic areas are worldwide, especially the tropics. The primary location of infection is the intestine. Diagnosis is based on finding eggs in the stool. Treatment is albendazole, mebendazole, and ivermectin. Ascaris lambricoides is an intestinal nematode. It has no insect vector. The stage that infects humans is the eggs, and the stage in humans most associated with the disease is the larva migrating to the lungs, causing pneumonia, termed as Ascaris pneumonia. Important stage outside the humans is the eggs survive in the environment in the warm, moist soil. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've learned something. If you really did, so give this video a big, big thumbs up. Comment down below in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button. And also, don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials. I've got my Instagram where I upload amazing infographics. For example, take this one where I have uploaded amazing resources for pathology, which online resources, website, YouTube channels, textbooks, um, flashcards, apps you can use and some techniques as well. I've got my Twitter and I rarely upload vlogs. So do check them out. Till next time. Assalamu alaikum.